Guys, lots of talk these days about artificial intelligence. Something we know. We're surrounded by it right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's our tagline. I think your hearing's going. I didn't say lack of. I said artificial. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> his point stands. <laughs> Like, there's no question that this, this is an exciting time, right? Tell, tell us why. Why? Yeah. Because I think there's a world of opportunities as well as challenges that are going to be created with the advent of artificial intelligence. And while it's, it's not necessarily something new, it's uh, much more talked about, much more in the news. I think that there's much more sensitivity to some of the risks or challenges that will be presented with progress, advancement of artificial intelligence. And so I thought it'd be a topic that'd be interesting for us to share thoughts on and Yeah, so let me just jump in. Um, I heard a report, uh, doctors talking about how they're starting to use uh, artificial intelligence in their work and how uh, they're very optimistic about the, uh, the reduction in workload that uh, artificial intelligence is going to uh, bring in for them and um that's very exciting i mean we are uh you know we are we're very worried about our healthcare system so uh is maybe ai a magic bullet that can really make a difference if, if applied properly well I, I think again i think there's there's two sides of the coin there's the the opportunity for uh significant improvements advancements in the areas of productivity efficiency um potentially overall quality of life and we can talk about healthcare as, as one area where certainly the impact can be extremely positive. And the other side of the coin, of course, is, is uh, put to ill use. Uh, it can have mm -hmm. some pretty devastating impacts on, on society. Uh, the, the other thing that probably gets a little less attention nowadays is um, what, what I refer to as, as human acceptance. We tend to be much more accepting of errors or problems that arise from human decision-making uh, than we are machines or intelligent machines. And, and the best example I can give today is with autonomous vehicles. I think it's, it's, it's fact today, based on available data, that there are likely to be far fewer casualties as a result of errors committed by uh, autonomous vehicles yep. than human error behind the wheel. Yeah, with the with the million miles or the millions of miles that have been driven driven autonomously so far, and the number of you know accidents. Yet, yet if there's one fatality, yeah, they freak caused out. by an autonomous vehicle, freak the fuck out. Everybody loses. <laughs> so their Tesla mind. comes to mind, right? The well, Tesla no, no, case. Waymo, Waymo, no, Waymo, Waymo was the one that happened. General there. Motors, yeah. uh, with Cruise, the Cruise division. Okay, the, there are many examples. But there are few. I say there are many. Relatively speaking, one death is one too many. But they're few in relation to the fatalities caused by human error every single day of our lives. So, so did you did you hear about the? Uh, or this has happened a few times, I think, where people start rioting and they start they they, they get in front of a, one of those Waymo cars. Yes. And they stop it and then they start pounding on it and, and and jumping all over it and stuff like you know mob mentality stupidities. Well, so so hence my point that that the one thing that is not getting as much airtime in terms of discussion is the degree to which we're willing to accept flaws. So I'll give you an example. Coming back to your healthcare, your point about healthcare. Imagine for a moment, I, and I'm gonna reflect back on a personal experience, where I went to see a, a, a generalist, a GP, um, many, many years ago because something just seemed to be off. And based on the symptoms that I described to the GP, he sent me for testing. As a result of the testing, I was sent to a specialist. As a result of seeing the specialist, I was sent for additional testing, and this process unfolded over a period of many, many, many weeks, only to be told that I had cancer, and then based on a number of additional tests that had to be performed, I was then presented with treatment options, I had to make a decision, and then I was put through treatment, and anyway, long story short, I'm here today, so it has a happy ending as far as I'm concerned. But imagine a world in the not-too-distant future where I'm not feeling well. I perhaps have to engage with a healthcare professional. From there, I'm sent for imaging. And the machine which I'm being put through for imaging purposes is actually an intelligent machine. And so as it takes the images, it immediately taps into a global database 
and diagnoses my condition. At the same time, we're talking nanoseconds, it taps into global databases, and based on my personal profile, age, health, other than the condition I'm being diagnosed with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it immediately comes back with a recommendation and statistics that support the likelihood of a successful outcome based on this treatment. All of this happens in a matter of minutes. Game that, changer. We're talking transformational. Yep. Game this, changer. this is where we're headed with healthcare, right? Not in a year or two, no. but this is where we're headed. Yep. And I would suggest that any area of life as we know it, we can come up with similar examples that will greatly improve quality. At the same time as when we think of this technology being put to use for military purposes. And I always chuckle when I hear the term defense because defense is really not what we're concerned about. It's militaries that are geared for offense. Yeah. So yeah. imagine now that through active traditional warfare, so armed conflict, as well as cyber warfare, this technology is put to use. The impacts could be absolutely devastating well, to society. It's already put Crippling. to use. I mean, question of degree. Yeah. yeah. Question of degree. Yeah. Right. You've, you've got the, 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 what are the drones, called? the drones that are being fl flown around right now. They're using AI technologies. For yeah, sure. but it's, it's, All of the, it's the still imaging. in its infancy. Oh, absolutely. Right? And it's going to go faster. So the pace of change is accelerating. Yeah. So we're going to see, you know, new things come out. All but if you faster. cripple a state or, or, or a country's mm -hmm. telecommunications infrastructure, right? power grid, <clears throat> mm -hmm. stock exchanges, financial systems, and it's all done on an automated basis, Right, with a technology that learns as it progresses. Okay, so yeah. thanks for the doomsday. Uh... No, 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 no. <laughs> Look, I have greater faith than that in humanity. Oh, do you? I do. No, that's not what I got from the past few times we've been together. <laughs> well, humanity, I, that's I, the key word. I think of myself as a realist. <laughs> so I think you got to look at both sides. Okay. Yeah. Right? But think of all the opportunities we've had historically to extinguish ourselves. Yet, for one reason or another, we haven't. We've, we've just had the, uh, the uh, atom bomb since World War II, so it's only been a very small amount of our collective history oh, no, no, but that we've go, had the ability if to you go back, destroy ourselves. If you go back far enough in history, when the population of this planet was far lesser than what it is today, right? you didn't need uh, yeah, nuclear power we in order to... We weren't all in one city. We were all over the world, so no, we have to we go weren't. and find people. Well, we weren't. Initially, we weren't. Okay, you're talking back, back you know, what, 150,000 years ago or something? I mean... <laughs> well, okay, you can go back. Okay, we can, but we can do this. My, my point is that throughout history, throughout civilization, we have had opportunities to extinguish ourselves, and we haven't. So that's the reason why I maintain faith in humanity, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we will find a way to introduce these, these groundbreaking, hmm. uh, game-changing technologies in a way where we can prevent calamities right no. and and benefit i think i think bad bad shit's gonna happen so and after it will happen and after the bad shit happens that's when the governments and legislations uh, legislators are going to start getting into okay we need to stop you know doing some of this or having some of this stuff available yeah i think the biggest threat for ai is on un the unemployment figure because i, I i've been reading exclusively books on AI in the last six, seven years. And every book has that issue as being a major issue that it will uh, cost a lot of jobs and will, will create some jobs, but it would, it's going to cost way more than create yeah. jobs. We're just at the, at the beginning edge of that. I yeah. agree with you 100%. Yeah. You look at uh, jobs like paralegals, 
where you know they would do all the work, the background work for their lawyers to get to gather the background information. You just go now into an AI query, Chat GPT or whichever one of them, and start asking for some of the stuff. You're going to get reams and reams of data that would have taken a week or two for a paralegal to go and find. You get it instantaneously, and you get a parse. You get all. You get everything you need. So what's going to happen to those jobs? Uh, but isn't that them. an exaggeration? I mean, no, it's is, not. isn't that no, with every not. with every technology no, wave? No, 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 these no. are these are the concerns that we've had, and as it turns so, out, there, there, there was a balance with every with every so, bit of technology advancement we've achieved. There's no bit this that, kind of level. I, okay, it's it's a little bit different. I mean, we've had machine learning, we've had inferencing, we've had artificial intelligence for years, but the outputs were never one that were easy to understand for the normal human being. You'd be able to, you know, get the data and and do things with the data, but you had to you had to know what you were looking for. You'd have to have the models and so on. Now you've you've got these the the the, the, the language models that that actually spew out stuff in a, in a format that human beings can interact with and understand. But that's not that's not even the issue. The the issue is one of think think of intelligent machines that have the capacity to continuously learn at a rate which far exceeds that of, of a human's ability to learn. And they don't take breaks, right. they don't take lunches. So, so, so it is different. Um, but They're not your, unionized, right, Dominic? Exactly. But, but to your point, they I, don't I work think for the that CBC. society has to adapt. And, and while it's true that many jobs will be lost, uh, some jobs will be maintained, others will be created, the nature of work is going to change significantly. Yeah. And we know that today so why not start preparing for it planning for it and and adapting now so that as it occurs because it's it's transformational but we're not going to leave one night come back the next morning turn on the lights and everything has changed no, it's, it's a gradual time. process right. yeah, absolutely right but we have to. the rate of change right. is going to accelerate right so who's going to fix the main problem right now everyone goes to university college and you know to get a degree, whether the degree is in in in, uh, in history, in in English, in psychology, in maths, engineering, whatever, you're going to get a degree. How about all of the uh, all of the uh, trades that a computer can't do, right? So everyone frowns upon the bricklayer, the who, electrician. Who, fr oh, not who frowns? Not well, around. not our. Maybe not our. To your yeah, but to your the, point. The younger people now, uh, the, the the kids growing up now. Right. A large proportion of them, I would say, maybe I'm wrong, but I would say a large proportion of them would frown upon a job where they have to use their hands. No, no, I, I understand. Right, but, right. But, so but the, just because they go to school doesn't mean that they're well informed or educated. No, but uh, most, talk about the trades. What I'm no, trying to no, mo most kids who are graduating from university today, sheer numbers, most kids are graduating with degrees that they'll never be able to earn a living. Yeah, with. but that's kind of my point, right? So this is what I'm trying to say is, is they're going to college for, the, for the, the, the concept or the idea that a higher education is important. They're going into fields or they're going into programs that aren't gonna really uh, provide them with the education they need for, for most jobs, especially in this post AI age. What I'm suggesting is that part of the way that we can kind of get uh, get prepared as a society for the change in the, in, in, in the job prospects moving forward over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is to start focusing a little bit more on the trades jobs, which, I mean, you go and try and you were talking about earlier about potentially having a house built and stuff and how much more it costs because you don't have people that can actually do the work anymore because all those people, our generation, the older guys, are retiring. I mean, their hands are, are useless after all these years of laying bricks, for example. Uh, but the, the younger generation isn't coming up to support them. And I think there's going to be a lot of... No, that, that's valid. I, I think, look, I couldn't agree with you more from the standpoint that I, I've believed for years and believe today and for the foreseeable future that the trades are, are essential, absolutely essential. And, and yes, we would do well and we would yeah. have done and, well. And our machine masters are going are gonna to oblige us to take care of them with these trades, so we have to have electricians, yeah. <laughs> so we can plug them in when they ask us to. And, and the well, other, they may, they may not need human intervention. Right, for that. Uh, and, and to the, uh, we can't emphasize that enough. I mean, uh, in North America, we are very behind when it when it comes to the trades and vocational uh, programs and, uh, and apprenticeships. And Europe is a powerhouse. Germany is a powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, and that's a you know huge boost to their the economy. The system's amazing when it comes. So to you're absolutely right about that. We're starting to change, but very slow and very much behind the times. And um, the other the other um, reality that I want to put on the table is that in a lot of economies, uh, we have uh, population uh, you know demographic decline. So the the uh, the work age right when we're living in, but we have uh, shortages of uh, of labor because the, the the working age segment 
is you're getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, no so this is why I'm meaning. saying, so this is what I'm saying, you know, AI, this is why, you know, in terms of the impact it'll have on, on jobs, I think there's, you know, there's, there's more of a conversation to have because we know that we don't have, you know, we don't have any more that labor force that we need. Oh, so yeah. maybe yeah, AI so could be the solution well, in that the, there's another more part of, There's another part of the story, which, which I don't think we can spend an awful lot of time on, which is that uh, ultimately intelligent machines are going to um, contribute in, in, a, in a meaningful way to, to rebalancing um, economic models. And, and so there will be ways to generate um, economic activity and, and the proceeds of those activities will help us to, to sustain or improve overall quality of life, uh, even for those people who are displaced or disadvantaged from an employment standpoint. So you're talking about minimum, uh, whatever, uh, guaranteed income. Guaranteed income or well, whatever. minimum guaranteed income. I don't know what form it's going to take, yeah. uh, other than to suggest that one of the opportunities presented by, by uh, the, the introduction of these intelli intelligent machines is that well, economic activity and wealth will be created in ways that, that were unimaginable uh, until a few years ago. For most, yeah, well, right? I'll, I'll kind of throw a wrench in that in my from my perspective because you're looking at the Magnificent Seven with Nvidia and those guys and okay. Microsoft and how they've gotten trillion a trillion dollar valuations mm -hmm. and you're seeing the growth uh, centralized within a very small number of companies that are that are able to jump on this AI bandwagon. Your suggestion is that it's going to become wider. Well, I, I think I, I'm. AI is going to be pervasive. It's going to be pervasive, but I think uh, the ability of the people to run their stuff is going to be based on a handful of companies that are providing the services. I, I don't necessarily agree, and I'll tell you why. I, I'm going okay. to go back to the late 1990s. Yeah. So, no, no, let, let, me, let me give you an example or two. So in the late 1990s, well, well before the Magnificent Seven, where you had other magnificent companies. So in the late 1990s, it was all about the Internet, right? And so you have companies like Cisco. Yeah, they're still there. No, no, they're still there, but they've been dead money from an investment standpoint for over 10 years now. But in 1990 yeah, I remember. To, to 2000, Cisco was a darling, yeah. right? Now, to their credits, they're still here today, so they survived, but they're no longer the, the, uh, as meaningful an organization as they were 25 years ago, right? Do you remember JD Uniface? Yep. Right? JDS before. Yeah. 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 What was the story there? Uh, they did the fiber optics. Optical, uh, couplers. So fiber optics yeah. were going to be the rage. And so here was this company, and, and people's emotions get the better of them. They jump on a bandwagon without even understanding what the company's primary business is. Right? So like sheep, we follow. And today you have companies that are greatly overvalued. I'm not saying they're not great companies. They're great companies. Are they worth what their current market capitalization suggests they're worth? In my view, highly unlikely. And is it a bubble that's comparable to what happened in the late 1990s? I don't know, but time will tell. Yeah, we'll figure that out. So today it's Magnificent Seven. You know, Microsoft was dead money for 15 years and suddenly came back. And why did Microsoft come back? Yeah. Well, well for a variety of reasons. AI helped. But the, last late, the latest surge yeah. is all due to this perception that suddenly, because of a $10 billion investment, yep. they're going to be the leader in artificial intelligence. It's early days. Who knows who the leader will be? It's early yeah. days, right? Because the leader... So, I, I think, and the financial markets are an interesting area because for me, it's an example of where we've seen machines and algorithms for years yeah. taking the place of human beings, <laughs> right? And we see what happens day in and day out, right? With, with valuations on the stock market. So look, I, I think it's an area that's very interesting. Uh, I, I think that we should keep our minds active thinking of, of the possibilities and the opportunities as well as being mindful of some of the challenges and threats that are likely to, to come with this new technology. So listen, last time we were talking about efficiencies in government, uh -huh. right? So there are ways that AI can be used within the context of a government to, to extract efficiency. Now, the question becomes, okay, well, is government now gonna fire 40% or 50% of their workforce 
and create a, uh, an unemployment issue in the country by doing so. So all of this stuff is, you know, we have a world that's turning. We have, you know, billions, trillions, quadrillions of things that are happening every day, and there's an inertia that's happening. So, yeah, all of this stuff is going to happen, but it's going to take years and years for this. Yeah, but your example about government is a valid one. And, and I would say that it's not about firing 40 percent because this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It's about setting guidelines. Example, as people age and retire from government, yeah, you don't rehire, you don't people. replace yeah. them. I understand. Right? I, I was just and trying yes, to make there, an there may come a time when you have to lay off 10 percent, but it's never going to be 40 percent or 30 percent. I just used the number as an example. I wasn't. No, no, but I wasn't married. to. No, no, movie. it's valid. Okay. But if it's 10 percent, it's manageable, okay. particularly if we put AI to good use yeah. and where governments today struggle with making the best decisions because the personal agendas of the people making the decisions are not aligned with the decisions that are for the greater good. If AI is making those decisions, perhaps the programs that get funded, no, I don't perhaps the programs making, that get defunded. Yeah, so I don't want AI to be making the decisions. No, but he's talking want, about AI as a tool. I no, want AI. I, I'm okay See, with I'm, it, intelligent machines no. that have gone through uh, a testing and validation yeah. process no, 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 no. are able to make decisions no, no, where no, you're no. taking a lot of the human emotion yeah. out of it. No. I need to be convinced. No, well, rational. Do, no, do that, I, don't, I don't agree with that. They do that already with X-rays. I don't agree with that. What Are you okay with an autonomous vehicle? Um, I don't know about that. Okay. I'll, uh, r right now, what I would like is for the AI tool to be used as a tool, not as a decision maker, but as a decision influencer. What I would like is for all the outputs to be presented to people who can think beyond the, uh, uh, who can think wider than the sum of their uh, programming. Because the sum of the knowledge and the output of an AI is based on the knowledge that it, it has. It doesn't have the life experience of a human being who's grown up in the, in the environment. No. I want a human being to be able to take that information, parse it, and no, because then we may as well be living in the, in the, in the matrix. At that point, we'll yeah. be in, our, in the pod in our matrix. I, I and think our lives are going to be yeah. decided for us. I think the genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry, the no. genie's out of the bottle, and I think you're you're at the same time overestimating um, the human decision-making process. Exactly. Uh, wow. And and underestimating. The potential. But, but Noran is so, saying, and no. I agree with Noran, he's saying that the buck has to stop with human beings. Yes, because in the end, you don't need... According to who? No, but Pat, According to Noran and myself. No, so according to human beings. No, but Pat, <laughs> Pat, hang on a second. You said earlier uh, about how you need a few good people in government or in any, anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. in, in an environment or in, in an enterprise, you need a few good people. Now, instead, of, if you have a government that has a million government civil servants, and all you need is a handful of 5, 10, 15, 20 people, 20 of the best people you can have to be making the decisions. That's all you need. You don't need a million people to have the ability and the wherewithal to make these decisions. You just need a few good, rounded decision makers to make these decisions. And I would rather have people making those decisions. Hey, I'm an electrical engineer. My background is technology. I love technology. But the technology that they're using is based on programming, and the input of those programs is based on whatever it scrapes off the internet. I don't yeah, want so, that thing to be making that decision. So, I so look, I, I think in its simplest form, uh, artificial intelligence, future state, will be completely detached from what you call programming. These are self-learning, self-developing oh, systems, yeah. totally autonomous. Yeah, and, and, and my concern with, with the few people you're referring to, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm basing myself and, and you know, my, my human character traits are causing me to focus on, on the examples I see in society today. And, and frankly, for the past 10, 15, 20 years, where power hungry, self-centered um, egomaniacs are ascending to positions of power and authority over society at large wow. and could use, potentially could use this emerging technology uh, for pur purposes that would be hugely detrimental to society, hugely detrimental, all because they're focused solely on themselves.
Okay, and your answer is let AI run everything. I think that you need to have guardrails. Yeah. So you do need a community okay. of people, again, who are vetted. That's what I just said. To ensure, no, no, not to make decisions. Okay. To make sure that the guardrails mm -hmm. are updated continuously to prevent disasters. So in your scenario, how does the democracy work? So in your scenario, who, who are we electing to do what? The future state of democracy? Yeah, that's a, in an AI, that's, yeah, let's uh, speculate. It's your laptop. <laughs> I think you're going to have greater opportunity uh, to have uh, input from the masses, and from the masses, I mean people who choose to have a voice and to have input into a process that has implications for society at large. So elections are gone? Well, elections as we know them today... Are gone? No, are going to be significantly different than they are today. In what way? So, so practically speaking, who am I going to... So let's say we are in AI and in an advanced AI society. Well, it, 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 it's hard for us to, to envision or imagine certain things that, that um, you know, we don't have any basis of comparison based on, on how society has evolved and how civilization has evolved. But conceivably, there could be a state at some point in the future where... Uh, our inputs as, as, as a democratic mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. people have an opportunity to input into priorities, into right. program. Right. And that input is then um, essentially uh, um, managed by uh, a broader intelligence, right? An artificial intelligence right. that will establish an agenda, that will establish objectives. Right. Desired outcomes, strategies, financial parameters, so basically we don't oversee the execution, okay. report back. So who, who are my political representatives in that scenario? Relatively few. And their role is, is markedly different than it is today. But they're still, but they're, they're still going to be the ultimate decision Trust, makers. Trusted, not necessarily decision makers no, in how we think no, of I, 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm right? very uncomfortable with that scenario. Well, uh, let's take an example. Radiologist. Radiologist is the, one of the highest paid health professional mm -hmm. today. Yeah. No way that a radiologist can have all different scenarios of, a, of a, an x-ray mm -hmm. than a machine can. Because the machine can accumulate so uh, much more. Take it a step further. A radiologist is a specialist. Yeah. Then you have to see an oncologist or a neurologist or whomever. Right. An intelligent machine is expert in all exactly. areas in all fields. so ultimately what if i'm a patient i'm going to be dealing with some sort of machine that's going to tell me here it's going to do not, the, the not diagnosis initially because you're not going to no, but ultimately that's what we're headed towards ultimately we could okay the possibility well, will be there if you what, start whether, to... whether or not we accept it that well that's and i and i have an issue with that so like, so do i want do i want for example our justice system do we want machines to be judges and executioners <laughs> My, so I come back to my automo autonomous automobile um, example. Yeah. That's the execution. The intelligent <laughs> machine will make fewer mistakes than the human being will. An AI judge will make fewer mistakes, will make than fewer mistakes or and I say mistakes, mm. will have fewer biases than a human judge. But sometimes biases are needed. Uh, not if they're politically motivated no, or self-serving or rich, which is often the discretion. case with human discretion beings. Discretion is needed well, in justice. Look, look what's happening in America today, right? Good example. So the, there... Can you be a little more specific? There's so much happening in America. Well, uh, I've lost track of the number of, of, of uh, uh, files that have been opened against a, a former and aspiring president uh, based on... Uh, a variety of alleged wrongdoings, mm -hmm. uh, some of which I try to look at things objectively uh, are, are meaningless, others that are extremely meaningful, right. yet as a society we can't seem to prioritize one from the other. Uh, the people who are pursuing justice with a sense of, of moral high ground are severely flawed themselves and making bad decisions.
example, Georgia, right? Yeah. Uh, so She was cleared, by the way. No, no, she was cleared. No, she was cleared with a condition. Either you step down or you fire the person that you put in place because there's a conflict of interest. Okay. So human beings are flawed. And, and again, I come back to my earlier comment, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour ago, where I said, for reasons that I somewhat understand, we're more willing to accept a higher degree of risk by a human because course. a human being is making a decision or taking an action of course. rather yes. than a machine. Yes. Yeah. 150 years from yes. now, that might not be the case. Correct. But right, right now, that's the case. That's no, no, right now. We're the talking about the future. If you want to put a timestamp on it, I don't for a moment suggest that in two, three, four, five years time, right. we're going to be in the state that we're discussing. Yeah, it's just to me. It, but it, in our children's lifetime, some of these issues are going to come to pass. Right. And I'm saying is I'm saying that right now I agree with what you're saying and, and we're, we're projecting into the future. But I'm very concerned about human beings becoming subservient to technology and to machines. They're I'm not, concerned about not that subservient scenario. necessarily. It I, sounds like no, it. No, no. But if you want to look, so when you go see a doctor, do you defer the, to them in terms of their opinion and their professional judgment? Of course. Okay. Why? Because uh, they are professionals. They're more knowledgeable. And they're knowledgeable. Than you are. Of course. What if a machine is more knowledgeable than they are? Well, they but it's not just about knowledge, Pat. It's also about an emotional connection. It's about confidence. It's about empathy. I'm diagnosed There's a human with, connection. I, I'm diagnosed with cancer. Frankly, I could care less about the human connection and the emotional connection. I want someone or something to tell me what path I should follow to put the odds of long-term survival in my favor. That's what I want. So, Pat, you're going to have to have both because when you go yeah. see a doctor, they're going to have to look at your arm, you know, touch it, poke at your stomach, see, you know, basically use their physical touch and ability to see and whatever. And then they can go and consult the AI that's in the background to get the best diagnosis I possible agree. for you. So I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be both, and it's going to be both for quite a long time. But but he's saying that, but I don't he's disagree a, with that. He's not disagreeing yeah. with that. So I'm that, saying ultimately, so we're saying the same ultimately thing. No. And, and I can only speak for myself, I'm already at a point where if you told me and proved to me that there was a machine that had these capabilities, my example about I'm being diagnosed. So nobody else, prison. no human, no, no other human interaction, I, just the machine, the I, machine I giving you a I diagnosis. I, okay. No, I, I, I now, wait a second. I accept that most people in this world need that human yeah. interaction. Yes. There's, just because I don't doesn't mean that I think we should do away with it. I'm just saying I don't. You remember in Star Trek, sick <laughs> day, you know, they just scan. <laughs> yeah. and it, uh, so yeah, but, it, but the is, scan was done why, by... Why was somebody scanning you? You don't need a human... No, no, no but it's because they, they, yeah. they didn't get to that point, yeah. you know, but... Yeah. Subsequent so story, so right? that, that, that's my big concern. My big concern is, uh, I, and I think we're, we're saying that in the short term, and, you know, we're not going to see it in our lifetime, but at some point, ultimately, you could be in a situation like that where the technology is going to be the ultimate uh, arbiter. Yeah. yeah. Now, and that, and that's that, and that, uh, I and, question and, that. And what's going to happen to all the jobs? Well, that's exactly. They're going to change. Yeah. They're going to change. So, right? so guys, some will be eliminated. Some will be maintained. So, some will be maintained. When you change. say some, let, let's look at the actual. I, I think what's important to do is is to look at the actual numbers of what 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 can happen. So, when you talk about call centers, when you talk about support staff, when you talk Drop about drivers, uh, you know, just all of the different things that can now be taken over by an AI inspired type of uh, uh, well, uh, capability. It, it's not just like, okay, well, we went from uh, horse buggies to cars. So the horse whips, uh, ma ho horse, you know, the thousand horse whip makers in North America got laid off. No, we're talking about tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions well, of people globally <laughs> that may be laid off or be yeah. affected. And now you're saying, yeah, but some new jobs are going to be created. Well, will 100 million new jobs be created or no. will only 5 million new no. jobs be created? It's, and then if there's a discrepancy, hang on, you, you see where I'm going. Yeah. There is a discrepancy. It there doesn't will be a problem. happen overnight. It I'm happens not over it, time. Yes, over the next 15 to 20 years. No, or longer. 50 years. Uh, yes. I don't give a shit. I think yes. it's going to be pretty yes. fast. So you start planning. No, with... I, it's not that it's going to be fast. Uh, the rate is going to accelerate. Yes, and you're saying we're going to start planning now. No, so that we're I didn't say we're going to start. Okay. We should have started already. Okay, but we didn't. Right? But, no, no, but Because you can't do this without the involvement of government. 
right? And so, so is, pri private and industry, government is not private efficient. industry is far ahead of governments in this regard, exactly. right? But private industry just gives a shit about the number of headcount that they can save and make more money, more money to their bottom line. That's the reality of private investment and private enterprise. I, so, I like respectfully suggest it goes further than that, but but isn't AI now like uh, op it's open source, right? I mean, aren't we already? No, no, what, no, what, no, what is open source? source. No. no, no. What is open source? No, it's open for people to use. Yeah. The code is not open. The code okay. is not open. Okay. So, I thought there's a book that I read that I read as well. Okay, so I think the guy's name was uh, Cam Fung. He was used to be a CEO, uh, executive at uh, Microsoft, Google, and the third one. He went back to China, set up his own uh, investment firm, and he invests strictly into AI businesses. And the last chapter of that book was about the impact. And he's very, he's very worried about unemployment. He thinks it's going to be significant. Okay, but guys, again, but the numbers, as I pointed out, we know that we have the employment population is reduced. The numbers are coming down. We right. have, we have, well, uh, in Europe, Japan, China. No, no, okay, no, but wait a second. You're talking about the. Are, are glo is the global population increasing? Or no, decreasing? I'm talking about global. Po I'm talking about. No, no, but but is the global population increasing? Yes, but decreasing? that's but that yes, because you know in the developing world and even then I think the, the trend is slowing. Even the developing. No, it world. may be slowing, but. But yes, but okay. there has but 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 it's also slowing, and in in the uh, the economically advanced societies, that's where there's significant declines. And I've given you some of the examples. Germany is one example that's that's facing a, a real serious demographic crisis. All of them. Korea, Japan is. Uh, Japan uh, the only one that isn't is the states. Uh, U.S. is not over 2.2 uh, kids per uh, person. Well, they're apparently for, uh, for immigration for, uh, for other reasons. No, 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 no. But immigration is a factor everywhere. Right, so right. The profile of all, all, saying, of all the developed yeah. countries is going to change significantly. Correct. Well, all I'm saying is, it, it, I'm saying with, uh, like I'm reassured because I know that there there is a decline in the employment population. Right. So therefore, as this technology really becomes uh, very, very relevant, you're it, hoping that they match. They match, or they come close. This is yeah. what I'm hoping. So I don't, I don't see like. The you know this this level of you know unemployment yeah. crisis unemployment levels yeah. that you guys are talking about right. i just don't see it given the current trends that might change I think. well in certain sectors it will be much more significant yeah. sooner in other sectors later more slowly but it's going to have repercussions across the board there's no yes. question but every technology every you know it has its re re repercussions this one's different and this it's one's different, different. okay they're all different. different okay they're all different uh, so you don't you don't agree with what he's saying this one is just the same pattern no no i'm i'm not disagreeing with what he's saying all i'm all i'm suggesting is that in the same way as we've adapted to previous significant changes we will right? adapt to this as well we will find a way to adapt I agree. that's all i'm saying i yes. agree I, uh, there, I agree so yes human beings are not going to be wiped off the face of the earth because of this yes we will find a way and, and, and way to adapt i'm just thinking there's going to be a lot of turmoil between the point where we're we've lost a lot of these jobs and we get to a steady state where where, where states understand that you need a minimum monthly income guaranteed or whatever income, yeah. guaranteed income or whatever and that companies that are making money hand over fist because they're the leaders in AI and and were able to capture the lion's share of the growth of AI revenues will somehow need to understand that they have to actually give up some of their gains in back into society to support all the jobs that they've not taken out of society uh, but, every i can't think of an industry yeah it's ever done that that no that that won't be impacted okay and and won't undergo dramatic change yeah but what i said was because about, of ai yeah but that's, that's not yeah. what i said what i said was these companies have to come to the realization that they will need to be further taxed <laughs> or contribute back into no, society. Man. You're advocating no, for it, higher taxes. No, I'm no, saying if this doesn't happen, there's going to be a lot of civil wars happening it, because there's going to be a lot of people who don't have anything to eat. And when a, you don't have anything to eat... But wait, hold it. It's exactly it. what the guy says in that chapter. Well, I haven't read He's, that book, but... Yeah, that's he exactly, says that I'm, will be part of the solution that those who are going to be making a lot of money in AI will have to start sharing. So you're back... Sharing. Yeah. So you, you just rejected my thesis, which is that there's going to be because of the demographics no, we talked I, about. I disagree with you. No, you disagree no, no. with me. So there's, no, there's never going to be any kind of uh, equilibrium no. or close to an equilibrium. No, no. That no. it's what, going to be. What, what equilibrium? Again, 
Again, uh, we, we know that the employment age population is declining in most advanced economies. Yes. Right? So Not uh, fast enough. Not fast enough. No, but what is the equilibrium you're, you're referring to? What so I'm saying is because we, we, we are headed towards significant labor shortages across, <laughs> sorry, across advanced economies. We are heading towards a major, major labor shortages across advanced economies because of the decline of employment age groups. Yeah, so if you're off by five or six or eight percent and so then I, you all of a sudden have AI so, that's like... Right, so I, 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 may be more, more, I may be more optimistic because I'm saying I, I don't see the, the, uh, the unemployment crisis that you guys are, are, are predicting because of that reason, because we are already heading towards and we are living uh, with employment shortages. Yeah. So this technology is going to what they what, what's going to it's going, it's going to there's going to be a balance it's going to bring so again there, there needs to new be a reform influence. right we're living with employment shortages so today we don't have a society that has a skills or competency profile that meets the rec broader requirements of our society okay we talked earlier about you know kids graduating okay from university well I, i'm sorry but you're pursuing a bachelor of arts for the most part you know a history hey, major hey, hey. No, no 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 i'm sorry but you're not going to be in a position okay. to make the kind of contribution to society that society needs you to make. Okay, come on now. Be careful with that. I mean, don't, don't overstate that. What was uh, Steve Jobs uh, studied calligraphy, for God's sakes? I'm sorry? Steve Jobs studied calligraphy Steve in Jobs college. Is a he genius. dropped out of college? Steve Jobs was but a he's genius. Studied, yes. No, he was a genius. How many geniuses are there? Okay, but I, I'm just saying that... Bill Gates dropped out of school. Right. Zuckerberg dropped out of school. Right. No, don't give me a handful of geniuses that are changing the world. Okay, so I'll give you. I'm talking about population. Let's talk. Let's large. talk about. Let's talk about the, the interest that uh, IT companies now have in, in in Bachelor of Arts graduates because they need people, you know, for coding. They need people that, that know logic, that understand logic. There is. I mean, there is more of a demand for for uh, all sorts of BA graduates right now who can think, who can uh, who can be logic, who understand logic. Uh, I, I don't know where you're sourcing your data from, but well, frankly, I think it's completely like. Awkward. Well, no, I mean, the, the, listen, we've never put more kids through university. And we're at a point today where there's a complete misfit. And I don't want to give you anecdotal examples, but the number of people today with with bachelor's degrees that are working in bicycle repair shops, restaurants and, and countless places other than than areas that are well matched to their to their uh, academic uh, uh, credentials and achievements is is off the charts no it's not absolutely no it's not absolutely no it's not we've never we've never had more opportunities for uh, most university graduates not all fields but there's a much wider net now for My university gosh. graduates you know what? I, I could not disagree with you more the shortage today is stem has been and is there are fewer and fewer people than required by society studying stem and that's what's required and that's going to be true for the foreseeable future until the machines take over even then even then no they'll manage themselves no no you're gonna you're they're gonna manage themselves to a high degree <laughs> right you'll still need people with expertise in these areas no i understand in the same way as you're gonna need people who are actually going to so maintain and repair so let's step back for one second so again we said and i think at least a few of us agree that ai is going to get rid of jobs faster yes. than the natural decline of our birth rate and the amount of people that are going to be at working age 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Let's, if that happens, we're going to have a societal issue. And that's what we were talking about, where the companies that are now most benefiting from, the la for, 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 from cutting jobs, from, from taking over the jobs that have been cut and making the money out of these things, are going to have to share back into society or else you but can not, have civil they're, unrest. But they're not going to do that. If they don't, they're not going to have a customer base because mm -hmm. you have a pyramid and everything is a pyramid. The base of the pyramid is where most people are. And those people, especially in the U.S., have a lot of guns. Now, if they can't buy food... If well, they, if, if you're they talking about Armageddon. No, I'm talking about civil unrest and civil war. I don't think, I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't so, believe... So let me give you the scenario. Yeah, give me the scenario. Me. So... Uh, a large percentage of the working population no longer can work because you go into a Walmart, everything is uh, electronic. Uh, every every item that you have before you can leave the store and the, and the turnstile opens to let you out, you will have had to pay for. 
You don't need any more cashiers. You don't need any Walmart greeters. You don't need anything. You need a few guys to clean up, a few people to clean up every night, and that's it. So every Walmart store, which employs now, I think is one of the largest employers in the U.S., if not the largest employer in the U.S., they can cut 80% of their staff tomorrow or in the next five to 10 years when they update all their stores. Do you think Walmart's not going to do yeah, that? Yeah, but, but society's not going to you know, remain stagnant. I mean, we're, gonna, we're going to adjust. Uh, yeah, education but, will adjust. There'll be new training I, opportunities. No, no, no. So, so again, I think, I think that you talk about education. So here's the thing. Um, so I wanted to touch on, on, on one of your comments. If you're going to ask these organizations that are at the cutting edge, mm -hmm. Um, to carry a greater burden, financial burden, in order to give back to society, you need to be extremely careful because never in history have we seen organizations lead subsequent um, technological uh, revolutions, right? So as we've evolved technologically from one era to the next, never has the same business, the same company, led those successive waves of innovation. It's always somebody new. Yeah, but you'll so know who you, the winners are after. Know, but no, but if you're looking at the incumbent and saying, okay, I'm not you, have, you have profited, you have benefited, you will pay the price. Say, whoa, whoa, wait a second. These guys are nipping at my heels just because they're smallish today doesn't mean that I'm staying in the leadership position tomorrow. Uh, okay. Right? My, that, that's one. Nothing is black and white. I'm, I'm not saying this as you must do this. I'm saying that intelligent people are going to have to figure out a formula that's going to allow some sort of funding to get back into the base because the people who need Walmart and who use Walmart are typically folks who are working class to the to a large extent if 70% of the people who are in the working class now don't have jobs or 50% or 30% these are large numbers yeah. I don't know if it's going to come to pass, but if it does, and this is the scenario that I was painting for you, if this if this comes to pass, what's going to happen? These people are not going to be able to feed their kids. They're not going to be able to pay their mortgages. Their cars are going to be repossessed. What are they going to do? Well, this is well, this is where we're, uh, this is what I mean that then society does not uh, you know stand still. I mean, we know we're, we're talking about this. We know you know that this is a trend. So you know we should be able to be we should be reacting to it with our, with our How? with with the the type of education that we're going to be what emphasizing. Does that the education doesn't change anything. No, but, we, but but are we okay? So we could we could conclude that we're just stupid. And we're not going to change anything, and we're just going to let this trend run its course. No, 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 change no. is going to occur whether we like it or Heck not. Yeah. That's I'm, what I'm saying. I, I have a hard time believing it's, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's about how you structure a society. And the structure of the society is going to have to change from a funding perspective. Because if all of a sudden the base of your pyramid where most of the people reside and okay. work hard and pay so their I'll, taxes I'll, right. don't have jobs anymore. So I'll give you an affected. example of, of how this should be done, right? Okay. So, so you're, looking at, you're looking at the advancement of this technology. And a, as a society, you know, we should be looking at what are the consequences going to be? Yeah. And well, then wh what do we have, what kind of policies and regulations do we have to put in place in, in order to be able Again, to manage this properly? Y yes. That's the starting point. No. That's but, not gonna happen. So, it is going to happen. You don't know what the but changes it's going, are. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can anticipate. Bring in people who have subject matter expertise. Right. Engage in conversation. And take that to the Congress in the United States no, no. to say, so, hey, no, we're so, going to give money uh, for people to stay at hold home. Hold on. Let me finish. <laughs> so first off, as is always the case, because this requires the involvement of government, we know already that we're going to be late in making the changes that need to be made. Because government is reactive. They always show up after the fact. Right, but it's not just government. No, no, but gov you can't change legislation. No, but, but there's, there is, there's, also, there's also popular forces, uh, the labor movement. Yeah, civil unrest. Okay. Not civil unrest, but labor movement. We're already movement. experiencing civil unrest. You exactly. have convoys here, you have... Uh, exactly, that's my point. That's no, no, why but, but it, the that, tipping point's already here when it, it comes is. to those things. But that has, and that's nothing. Uh, this has nothing to do with AI. Not yet. It's this gonna is, be this one is more... people feeling that their rights have been taken away from them. Yeah. So... And again, Wait till human, AI human makes nature. All decisions. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> their rights have been taken away. That's why I prefer AI because the human being who has a sense of entitlement oh, God. and feels okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my shotgun out or my okay. rifle out or my AK-17 so, out because uh, 
somebody has taken something away from me. Well, who the hell told you you were entitled to this to begin right. with? Right. Okay, but let's go back. Let's go back to what you guys are saying. So you're saying that uh, it's impossible. You don't believe that it's possible for society to manage this. No, I'm it, saying that the, society the, will have no choice but to manage this. So we've said a few things. One thing is, yes, government will have to get into play. Not just government. Hang though. on, hang on. Let let me finish though. The government will have to get into play, but they're going to be late because they are reactive. Right. Right. So what I'm afraid of is in the interim, there's going to be enough shit that happens that people are going to start getting to the streets and we're going to have civil unrest happening especially in the u.s where everyone and their grandmother has a gun literally okay so i'm concerned from a societal perspective that if we don't get ahead of this thing which is going to be almost impossible in my opinion as well as yours i think mm -hmm. from a legislative perspective to get ahead of this thing because to your point as well we don't know which companies are going to be successful or not but we have to put in some mechanism at some point to be able to fund some of the shit that's going to be taken away from people if we're correct and the if is that there's going to be enough job loss that it's going to become significant. Okay, so and if it is, and there is no mechanism to support those people. Okay, so here, through. here's here's where where I'm going to interject and say, I concur with what you've said. I believe, I can't tell you how today, but I believe that one of the things AI is going to bring to the table is an opportunity to generate new sources of economic activity and wealth that can provide for some of the people I that have so. been displaced I hope so. and have been negatively impacted. I hope but so. That, but um, so what I'm saying is, what I'm, what I'm projecting is that you're going to have a combination of these forces. Natural, you know, I hope so. Natural economic. But we can't count on them. Natural economic development yes. and, and uh, yeah, a combination of what you reform. said. We yes. shouldn't right. count on anything. Right. You're, you're going to have you're going to have a labor movement. I'm not op uh, optimistic about it. Right, you're going to have labor movement, and you're going to have the government because what, uh, governments could regulate. I mean, they could look at scenarios and say, if we're looking at a well, like a thirty percent unemployment he's rate, different. He's saying the AI is going to actually. I'm just giving one example. I'm I, don't, you one I, don't, example. I have a lot more faith in AI than I do government. There's no government, right? But but no government, you know, uh, no uh, government, significant government is going to stand by and tolerate a projection that you're going to have a thirty percent unemployment rate in two years. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to, re the, but they're going to uh, bring together, you know, uh, no, no, experts. Okay, so, so talk about policy. Talk about regulation. So, so the other talk thing about with, mitigation. No, no, the other thing with AI is, is it can't. Some of the issues we're discussing cannot be dealt with at a local, state, or national level. It has to be global. Yeah. It has. They're not global. a global consortium on AI. Are you kidding? No, no, I thought there aren't no. even there aren't even national consortia yeah. that uh, are dealing with these issues effectively. Uh, well, it's that, global, but that's another example. There's because a, there there are ethical issues that have to be dealt with. There's a consortium between Russia, North Korea, and China. Oh, we're saved. <laughs> Very reassuring. <laughs> the issue has been resolved. Let's move on. <laughs> well, you were asking for a consortium. Are you serious? Not uh, any no. Well, so the two the, the today. The, the, the two con leading. consensus is that the two leading um, uh, countries in terms of, of, of AI advancement are the United States and China. Yeah. Yeah, no Makes sense. And, and everybody else lags far, far, far behind. Uh, Makes sense. And most people think China is ahead of the States. Not from, I don't think anybody's not ahead from of American a technology. Pers not no. from a hardware perspective. All the core enabling technologies today all the patents. US. come out of the U.S. Yeah. All of them. Well, they'll all be stolen by China. <laughs> it's, okay. yeah. it's one thing to steal, but it's, yeah, it's you gotta make advancement. The run. Advancement. Yeah. You, you, you need know, three nanometer it's technology. One thing to ape, it's one thing to ape or copy somebody else. It's another thing to truly innovate. Yeah, and they all the leading innovation is still coming out of the U.S. And they don't have the fabs for the silicon on the China side. That's just a question of investment. And technology. Oh no, they and technology. That's people. ASML won't sh won't uh, share. They may that. not have a choice. ASML is not sharing. No, 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 China. no. I'm saying there are organizations that have expertise that may not have a choice at some point, but to provide their expertise to China. Oh yeah. Sure. So guys, Taiwan's just a hop and a skip away. <laughs> oh uh, well, as soon as uh, the U.S. has enough semiconductor manufacturing uh, on its own shores. I think that's going to be the green light for China to go thanks take to, over thanks Taiwan. To one, thanks to one President Joe Biden. There you go. Now it, it's, it takes more than one fab. Yeah. Thanks to him, what Taiwan is going to be invaded? No. Or? Oh, no, okay. No. no. <laughs>
<laughs> the CHIPS uh, initiative is what he's talking about. The CHIPS initiative is what I'm talking I don't about. Know. Then the Pentagon just renege on a $2.5 billion commitment to Intel? Um, well, Intel isn't the leading semiconductor manufacturer anymore. In the U.S. they are. Uh, yeah. Well, you need TSMC. No, no. For... Well, TSMC. <laughs> TSMC you know was what? supposed to open an Arizona plant, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is the ownership? Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Taiwanese. You, need, you need American companies to step up, right? Anyway. Anyway. Guys, how are we doing? <laughs> Uh, we're good. I guess, uh, we, you know, we can, we can wrap it up. We can talk a little bit more. What do you guys feel like doing? We wrap it up for today. It's a heavy topic. It's a very it heavy is. topic. It's, yeah. very heavy, heavy it's Armageddon. Topic. All right. This is one we'll probably want to revisit at some point in the future, but, uh, I love, anyway, I love good, the good discussion. I love it. Thanks again. Always a blast. Thank you guys. See you guys next time. Always learning from you guys. Ciao boys. Arrivederci.